The discussion today is about depression. There are many people that have been depressed for many years, and I get lots of letters. And sometimes they say that I found no meaning in life, no purpose, and uh, you pulled me out of it. I get a lot of letters like that. So that's the only thing I can say it's not due to genetics. If it was due to genetics, I couldn't pull them out. Does that make sense to you? Now, what is depression? If you live vicariously to another person, let's say you rely on that person entirely, you live and that person dies, you lose your identity because you put your identity in another person, which isn't a good thing to do. That's a kind of dependency, you know what I mean? So, that's part of depression, a little bit of it. The rest is loss of identity. And you can lose your identity if you're brought up with a philosophy of life that doesn't reinforce you. If you're brought up with a set of values, do the right thing and everything will work out all right. And if it doesn't work out all right, you become depressed because you lose predictability. Is that clear? If you have predictability about yourself and other people, you can anticipate certain things. But if you have no answers, if you look for answers in your own mind, it isn't exposed enough. There's not enough in schools that give you a way of thinking so you can solve problems. Because it isn't that they don't want to, they don't have it. They've never found a way of thinking that can solve problems. That's why when the businessman retires, he may become depressed because he has no game to play. All his life, say a guy that owns a jewelry store that sells jewelry, and he, every sale makes him feel good, then he retires. And he has nothing anymore. He has no identity except sales of jewelry. Do you understand? That's gone. What follows is depression. There are some dogs that have been depressed due to they had a very close relationship with their master. When the master dies, they sat next to the master and wouldn't go away and bark at anybody and would try to take them away. Because their full identification was as a team with their master. They had no identification when the master died. They had no way of looking at it. The difference between humans and most animals, most animals don't fear death. They don't even know there is such a thing. But they move away from animals that are larger than they are. That's a reflex. But they don't know what death is, nor do they think of it. So far, any questions? Okay. So a person that asks themselves questions, why did my wife leave me? And they can't figure it out because everything they've done was pleasing. And they don't understand it. That is not necessarily a logical question. Your wife may have left you for many different reasons that she likes a guy tall with blonde wavy hair or stocky or whatever. And if you don't meet that image, she might leave you. The assumption that she won't leave you is what can depress you. Your assumption about the world, surely they won't have another war while they're having a war now. You can't say that. You can say, I'd like to see peace on earth, so you work toward it. But if you hope there's peace on earth, you might get depressed by the next war. See, when people say to me, when will the Venus Project be built? The honest answer is, I don't know. I don't even know if we'll get there. But I can't accept what I see, so I try to intervene. Intervening, does that mean we'll have a better world? Not necessarily. Whatever you get is what you get. Do you understand that? The assumptions, surely people can all see the logic of a one global society. No, they can't. 
That's, that's a major problem. So you use different techniques to try to get them oriented toward that. Okay, so what is depression and how do you get rid of it? If you're depressed, it means you're looking within yourself for answers. And you can't get that. How did I get it? I, I didn't find it in psychology books at all. Here's how I got it. I sat down and I said, what is depression? I said, I don't know. How can I know what it is? But a depressed person always seems to have a low self-image. Do you know what that means? I'm not getting anywhere in life. I'm not respected. Three girls left me. Whatever it is. It's a low self-sufficiency to start with. Now, instead of looking for the girl of your dreams, you try to make her. You know what I, that means? Educate her in whatever way you can. Does it mean it'll work perfectly? No. But it'll work better than you doing nothing. Do you understand that? Therefore, depression is not only loss of self-image, they have none. The guy finds himself in the Marines and he wants to be successful in the Marines. And that can't bring success. Unless they give you medals and everybody pats you on the back. That's your self-image. I made it, you can say. Or an actor that does a, a, a theater actor that acts before an audience, a live audience, and they applaud after. That makes them feel good. A movie, he doesn't know. If he works in a movie, he doesn't know that people are going to applaud. Do you understand that? Therefore, he could encounter depression. Anybody that does any routine a job, a jeweler, a plumber, an artist, a painter, if they don't get reward for their painting, like you're a genius, you're a good creative, that makes them go on painting. But when people say, what the hell is that supposed to be? If they paint because they like to paint, that's much better if that occurs. If you go for a walk because you like to go for a walk, not because the doctor told you to go for a walk every day, at least a half hour. But if you don't do it because you want to do it, if you go out for a walk through the country and you smell the trees and you look around and you, you're pleased by that, do it. If it depresses you going for a walk, you have to restore the self-image. In most instances, there is no self-image. So you have to give them a self-image. You have to talk about a lot of things. The person gee, I didn't know that, that water became ice suddenly. I thought it was gradually it became high. Well, whatever it is, if you expose them to different branches of science and they begin to find answers that satisfy them, their self-image grows. But if you make a Lutheran of a person who says, have faith in God, he'll look after you, if you put that faith in somebody you can't see or touch, it may carry you through. Because you know there's somebody up there that loves you, even though nobody does that there is somebody up there. That, that helps some people. But it's not genuine help. Do you understand? Because he says to the minister, what did I do wrong? If you believe in right and wrong, you can get depressed. I must have done the wrong thing. It isn't the wrong thing that you do. It's a less valid thing that you do. It's a less appropriate thing that you do. Do you know what I mean? Not wrong. If you work on something, snap out of that depression. Have faith in yourself and confidence. Well, they might get full, gee, you sound great. But that doesn't take away that self-image. You don't take away the self-image, you add to it. You understand what that means? Whatever the person is. They, they only have no self-image. They don't know who they are. So. I want to take, if you're in pain, that's different. I'm not talking about that. If you have a tumor growing in your lungs and you can hardly breathe, that's something else. That's not depression. That's a physical disability. But if you have your health and you, you feel like you're learning something every day, 
And don't ever assume that you can fix something too. You can try to fix it. I'm going to try to fix it. If that doesn't work, you come out another way. If that doesn't work, so I can't handle it. I need more information in that area. That's what self-confidence is. The more genuine information a person has in certain areas, people that do feel, I can't get up before a hundred people and say something, because I worry about whether I'll boo goof and they'll laugh at me, you know. Here's how you handle that. You never talk to people to win approval. You talk to people to inform them. If you were in a building, you were in the hallway, and a big beam fell on fire, you go in for the thousand people, say, exit as fast as you can, there's a fire, and you don't feel bad about it. Because what you're saying is essential to their well-being. But when you gamble and you say, I don't believe in God at a church meeting, they can all say, what? You know, they're not going to say, how do you account for all this? They don't even do that. If they don't do that, there's no bridge. You have to build a bridge. Even a religious person, when they get a window crank and they crank it and the window doesn't open, they take it back to the company. They need verification. When they buy something, guys says, if you buy this window, it's hurricane proof. This is a sheet of plastic between two sheets of glass, so you can't smash it with an object. And you have to give the person with a low self-sufficiency a high self-sufficiency by giving them a direction, or her, so they don't concentrate on themselves. I've been working all these years and I have nothing to show for it. Did you assume that you would have something? You, what you have to do is engage in self-image and asking questions. Why am I depressed? Why do I feel insufficient in the crowd? Because I'm hoping the crowd will like what I say. I don't give a shit. If they believe the earth is flat and I find out it's round, I enjoy telling them it's round. If they refuse it, that's their problem, not mine. But if you feel you are unsuccessful in presenting an idea, the assumption that you will be successful is depressing. Do you understand that? That's what makes depression. When you do something and nothing happens. When you row a boat, it doesn't move. If you can get in a boat but you don't know how to use the oil and it doesn't move, you get depressed. When you pull on a string and a motor doesn't start, what the hell? You pull it on until it does start. But, or you learn that you might have to change the spark plug. It might have a shorter gap or a longer gap and you bring the gap closer together. So you have a spark. If you don't know those basic things, you can kick the lawnmower. We tend to project living human characteristics into things. Sometimes if your binoculars don't work, you throw them on the couch. You know what I mean? Because you get mad at the binoculars. You give it a personality. God damn it, you should work. I paid $40 for it. That's why it should work. No, you paid $40 and it doesn't work. So you take it back. Or you leave it until you go into town again. But the throwing it on the couch or the floor doesn't make it work. Sometimes, if there's a loose wire in your TV set and you kick the set, and the wire, it'll go on again. And so sometimes that carries on that type of value system. I think I covered everything related to depression. It's a low self-image, or no self-image, or looking for justice. If you give them something to do that they identify with, not something that you like, something Talk to them about Venus, right? They work on it, talk to other people. Then they feel they're doing something. If other people don't understand them, they might feel disappointed. What they're disappointed in is their inability to make contact with other people. So it takes practice and error and mistakes. When I first walked over to clan people, so why are you beating up the black guy? He didn't do anything to you. They just say, just said a nigger lover from the north. They did not hear that, nor could they hear that. 
Do you understand? So if you talk to a depressed person and you show them what it is, so they know what's wrong with them, they don't have a self-image. How do you get a self-image? By learning new things. By learning things that take you out of the old value system.